Wrestling is one of the best bases for MMA. This is a fact, and no one disputes it. But which kind of wrestling is best? Well, there's an interesting theory circulating in the community that Greco-Roman wrestling is actually the best form of wrestling for MMA. And the biggest proponent of this theory is Chael Sonnen. The Greco-Roman athletes that transferred to MMA seem to have done better than the freestyle athletes. The logic behind this claim comes down to the differences in rule set between Greco-Roman and other forms of wrestling. Greco is unusual compared to other wrestling arts in that you're not allowed to grab your opponent's legs, resulting in practitioners standing much more upright and getting takedowns from a standing clinch. And this allows Greco-Roman wrestlers to be more accustomed to the standing clinches prevalent in MMA. Being able to use their bread and butter wrestling tactics gives them an easier transition to the new sport. Except. It doesn't. The theory behind why Greco-Roman wrestling is more successful is built around the false assumption that Greco is more successful. To really examine this, let's compare Greco-Roman to freestyle wrestling, as they're both in the Olympics and internationally recognized and practiced. In an extremely fortunate turn of events, the Wikipedia pages for both sports includes a list of practitioners that notably transitioned to MMA. The Greco-Roman section includes 13 fighters, many of which are high-profile names. And that's pretty good, until you compare it to the freestyle page, which includes 71 names, many of which are more high-profile fighters. Now, I'm sure some of you will take issue with the idea of using a dynamic list from Wikipedia as my source of information, but it's all I have available. Give me a research grant, and I'll consider creating better data. Now, on its face, the list of freestyle and Greco-Roman fighters seems to completely destroy the idea that Greco-Roman wrestlers transition better to MMA. But there are a few counter-arguments that I want to address. For example, what if freestyle wrestling is more popular? This would allow freestyle to dominate the MMA statistics by just having more people to start with. I would normally control for popularity, but I can't find any numbers on whether freestyle or Greco is more popular. While I would be perfectly willing to believe that freestyle is more popular, I would have a hard time believing that it's over five and a half times more popular. Both styles have been in the Olympics for the same amount of time, and I just haven't found any evidence that there's significant differences in popularity. Which I assume would be something people would talk about when comparing the two. Okay, but what if freestyle attracts better or more high-profile athletes? Then they might be successful in MMA, not because freestyle is better, but just because the athletes are better. Interestingly, this is an idea that Chael Sonnen has actually given us anecdotal evidence for. The Greco-Roman wrestler is generally the second tier athlete. The premier athlete generally go into freestyle. However, it's probably not true, at least internationally. There's actually been research done comparing the athleticism of freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestlers. The study concluded that freestyle wrestlers have better flexibility and Greco wrestlers have better everything else. Arm strength, leg strength, speed, agility, you name it. It would seem that Greco has the better athletes, largely because it has less legal moves. People have theorized that a smaller technical range means that athleticism matters more. I don't know if that's true, but it has resulted in a lot of countries pushing their best athletes into Greco and a lot of Greco gyms focusing more on athleticism. Okay, but what if freestyle is more popular in regions with stronger wrestling cultures, allowing freestyle to have a better pool of experienced and dedicated wrestlers. Or maybe freestyle is more popular in regions that like MMA, leading to a higher percentage of freestyle wrestlers making the transition. In terms of regional popularity, the first thing we have to acknowledge is that both lists of wrestlers that transition to MMA are absolutely dominated by Americans. With 10 out of 13 Greco wrestlers being American, and 48 out of 71 freestyle wrestlers being American. And this does make sense, because MMA is more popular in the US than many other parts of the world. And Americans tend to do better in freestyle wrestling than Greco because the rule set is more similar to American folk style wrestling. Since the year 2000, Americans have won five Olympic medals in Greco, but have won 16 in freestyle. So is that the explanation? Are Americans throwing off the curve by being more likely to go into freestyle and more likely to transition to MMA, thereby pumping up freestyle's numbers? Well, Probably not. Once we exclude Americans from the data, freestyle actually becomes more dominant, with 23 MMA fighters compared to Greco's three. 
Now, Greco is only open to men, but even excluding women from the data only brings Freestyle's numbers down to 21, making it seven times more represented in MMA than Greco. The idea that Greco-Roman wrestlers are more successful in MMA just isn't supported by the evidence. No matter how you crunch the numbers, Freestyle is more successful. Okay, but how does this square with the explanation about upright stances? Wouldn't Greco wrestlers be more accustomed to an MMA stance? Well, kind of. While the stances of Greco and MMA might be similar, that doesn't really matter. What matters is not surface level similarities, but how well you can implement your game. In this context, that's how well you can close distance on a striker and initiate a wrestling exchange. If your takedown entries don't work in an MMA rule set, then your wrestling isn't going to be very successful. Unfortunately for Greco wrestlers, the ways they typically move in and establish a clinch would get them punched in the face in MMA. Initiating a wrestling exchange is simply more difficult from a Greco standpoint because you're walking in right at fist level. Freestyle, on the other hand, makes great use of leg attacks such as double and single leg takedowns. And when your opponent is standing completely upright, it's way easier to level change on them and to get to their legs. Anyone that walks into a freestyle match completely upright is probably going to lose because you just can't get away with that against someone that knows how to shoot for your legs. This means that instead of giving an advantage to Greco, the upright posture of MMA actually gives an advantage to freestyle by exposing the legs for takedowns. Even when we look at famous MMA fighters with a Greco base, we notice that most of their takedowns are leg attacks. Even Chael Sonnen, who's probably the most high-profile proponent of the Greco-Roman superiority theory, built his career off of double legs, which don't even exist in Greco-Roman wrestling. However, looking at this information can actually tell us something else really interesting. Because we have three facts pointing us towards a specific conclusion. A. American wrestlers are disproportionately represented in MMA. B. The ratio of freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling is more similar in American MMA fighters than international ones. And C. Most of the successful Greco-Roman wrestlers, and especially the American ones, are successful because of skills that Greco couldn't have given them. I would argue that these clues lead us to the conclusion that freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling probably aren't as good for MMA as American folk style, likely because of its emphasis on ground control and escapes. In freestyle, the person on bottom is incentivized to not move and wait for a stand-up from the ref. In folk style, the person on bottom is incentivized to get to their feet. This means that folk style is much better at teaching escapes from the bottom and control from the top. And that skill set is a lot more applicable to MMA than the ability to be a starfish. With a folk style background, whether you go into Greco-Roman or freestyle matters a lot less as long as you retain your folk style skills. But for those of you that don't live in the US, freestyle seems to clearly be better than Greco-Roman for the same reason that people think Greco-Roman is better. MMA fighters stand upright. And if you can throw a double leg on someone that's crouched low to the ground, throwing a double leg on someone that's standing up is way easier. And while every form of wrestling is great, the extreme usefulness of leg attacks in MMA means that Greco-Roman is probably one of the least useful wrestling backgrounds you could have.